Hi everyone, this is Kelly from The Truth and Story and I'm kind of just doing a refresh or update video about charm casting because I've had a few people request this. I will put a link to any of the charm casting or, or the, I think I have a playlist for charm casting and I'll put a link to that in the description box below because I do feel like this is probably going to be a little bit repetitive to people who may have already watched those but uh, again it's been requested quite a bit by you know different people and so I thought I would just go ahead and do an update. So um, this is the board and you'll recognize this if you saw my old ones uh, and I, I still absolutely love this for charm casting. Um, this was I found in a hobby shop like I think it was Hobby Lobby but it could have been Hobby Lobby Michaels even Joanne Fabrics in the US um, but any kind of like a hobby store that does a lot of scrapbooking I think that the point for this this, you know, you could it fits it exactly fits a piece of scrapbook paper so that you could kind of make a um, something to hang on the wall because there was a wall hanger in the back that I took off and it was to like sort of decorate. But anything that has a little bit of a lip like that is what's really useful because it does keep the casting contained. <clears throat> I don't have a huge table width wise and if I want to cast nicely and vigorously they definitely run the risk of flying everywhere and so having something like this that has edges uh, is quite nice. You could even use a frame probably like a square frame that has sort of a frame on the side and then take obviously take the glass out of it. Um, just something to kind of stop the way things go but this is really nice. I don't know if you can find something like this even on Amazon. I'll see if I can find anything similar but um, you know this again was made to be sort of a collage I think to work with scrapbook paper and add trinkets and stuff and do a collage. Um, but I really do love having this for charm casting. Now this is just a like cardboard. It's like that really heavy duty you can almost see where it's layers of, of uh, paper that are made, so almost like paper mache, right? They have, again, in hobby stores, they have all these, and I think they're made to then paint them. Uh, but what I like about this is that it's pretty loud, you know, shaking up a bunch of charms anyways. And then if you put it in anything uh, glass or metal or... You know, just about anything. Uh, this is the best I've found um, that at least mutes it down and it's not banging up against something really hard. Um, I do want to get a nice, probably a, like a, a leather, or one of those old leather dice throwing cups that are have felt inside and they're all kind of made of like thick leather. That would probably mute it as well. Uh, but in the meantime, this has worked really well. I've used this for well over a year. I don't know how when my first charm casting video was. But I've used this for some time and it works, you know, it, it does the trick. And it's got a little bit of decorations here on the side, so it even looks pretty just sitting on my table. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pour these out. Um, so you can see, I do have more than just these. But these are the ones that I really use for charm casting. Sometimes I'll pull a couple of the other ones in. Um, sometimes I'll take them out if they just don't feel like these have been sort of refined and used and these are pretty consistently work really well. The way that I approach, and again, I, there's links below that go into, I think, more detail. I think I even show the ones that I chose to use for Lenormand. But because I wanted my charm casting set to have a core structure to make sure or A, that certain things could show up, and B, that I can use significators, I did make sure that the core of my charm casting is got a fig, a got, it has a charm that is connected with each one of the Lenormand figures. So for example, I have a heart card, I have a card, I have a heart a charm, I have a bird charm, I have a bouquet charm, um, I have a star and a moon and a sun and a dog, you know, I'm not going to go through all of them, and a ring, right, so I have, I, and very importantly, I have a uh, male and a female card here, figure, 
not card, a uh, charm here for significators. I have an anchor. You know, I have all of those basic ones. So I have some, this is my clouds, um, which I know you could use this for magic and genie and bottle, but I really didn't have anything to, to use for clouds. And you know how you always see that smoke come up and at first you can't see the genie and all of a sudden it clears up. That's why I used a little genie bottle for the clouds card. Um, and then I have, you know, like I don't have a mouse, but I have uh, poison because the mouse card for me is very similar to poison. It's, you know, something that's eating away um, at something. And so I have that which represents the energy of the mouse card. And, it's, you know, a little letter, which is probably really a purse, but it's a I think it actually opens yeah a little letter here for the letter and so on and so forth fish acorn is not that's just because I love it um, I don't have a ship card I have this so this is the journey card or I can even use this one um, but that's more for me specific direction here's the tower and then I have other ones that are uh, that are not Lenormand that was just sort of where I started from so that I had I knew that I had that core there that was balanced and would and I, I could work with very easily scissors <laughs> I have the axe or the scissors could be either one could be used for um, for the scythe but I use the 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 axe here because it's the same sort of thing it can be very painful and tiring to chop wood but you're also getting something from it right so the scythe is about for me the scythe is about something that's cutting um, and difficult and painful but you're actually gaining something you're harvesting or this you're harvesting wood so <laughs> similar here here's my anchor over here um, I don't have a whip but I do have this sort of rod here that you could beat somebody with I suppose <laughs> um, here I have a flower which is a floor de lis um, so again it's got that core but it doesn't just have that like this is my newest one with this uh, little pair of handcuffs I've seen these in other people's charm casting and I just thought they were so awesome and uh, but I finally f stumbled on a pack of these for like a dollar 74 uh, like a four pack of these and I love it because it's you know the idea of being bound that idea of feeling restricted uh, that kind of thing and 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 you can even think of it as sort of the prison card in Kipper deck right which is really about being isolated and imprisoned but it's usually through cho your own bad choices right uh, because obviously are there people in prison who don't deserve to be yes but in a general sense the people that end up in prison are because they've done something that they shouldn't have and so the consequence to their decision is kind of restricting them so you can use that less than okay you've done you know, oh my goodness see this showed up you've done a crime but you can use that for that idea of some decisions that we've made might be restricting us or binding us to a situation that might not be great right so um, I'm really excited to have uh, found those um, I like the fish hook too because that's kind of got that connotation uh, a similar but you kind of are are tempted right so they put a worm on a hook for the fish and the fish is like oh I really want that worm I probably shouldn't go do that there's probably a hook there but I really want that worm <laughs> um, so you can get caught in you know sort of your temptations or um, things of that nature kind of a little bit like the devil card um, I love this was sent to me, <clears throat> this little uh, crystal ball, you know, kind of to speak to intuition and those types of magical things. It's a rock here um, for mount, that's for my mountain card, little owl, obviously, for wisdom. Um, I like the arrow because I can look to where that's pointing to just kind of see uh, important things. So pay attention. You know, that arrow is pointed somewhere. Um, the fox. I love the fox. I love the mask as well. What are we hiding? Uh, if it's flipped over, you can think about what is being revealed. Um, cross for the Lenormand cross, a castle for the house. I don't have a bear, but my stag works as the bear is the idea of strength um, there. I love this. This is to do with family. So this is actually was on my grandmother's charm bracelet who passed away um, quite some time ago. Um, 
she did meet my son. Uh, he, I have some pictures of her with my son, but she passed before Katie was born. Um, but it has my name, Kelly, on it. It has my birthday on the back of it. And this was my grandmother. So there's that, you know, energy of just um, our roots and our family. Uh, this one is also an old, I think this has... I'm going to have to try to clean that. I have a cleaning cloth now. I need to clean that to see. But this was on my grandmother's um, as well. This is actually the child card where this is more that idea of family and things of that nature. Um, Lotus for all the things that Lotus. I mean, you can kind of go with, I love the hedgehog the idea of protecting yourself. <laughs> um, the clock for time. So, you know, just various things that mean various things to me. And I do have them written down in, see, I still haven't completely finished. I kind of got stalled because I was like, oh, I'm, I thought I was going to do something else. Here we go. So I have sort of a list of the charms. At that point, I was at 65 and sort of a basic keyword um, so that if it's been a while and I'm like, oh, wait, what did I, what was I doing with that? Um, I haven't really looked at this at all, but also this is kind of for my daughter at some point. She would have a list of how I use them. So I need to put that into my new little white book. But I'm rambling. I'm probably going to have to cut some of that because we're actually 12 minutes in. But uh, the point is, is that some of these things are found. Like this is a ring that I had. This porcupine was on a little cross-stitch thing that I had. Um, this... Uh, wherever that went. You know, this was my grandmother's uh, here. Uh, the stone, obviously, was something that was found. Uh, this was on a little necklace. That's the garden card for me, uh, just because. Um, <laughs> um, this was uh, one of my father's um, on his military jacket. It was some kind of something to do with his military things. Uh, this is the path card for me. You can go either direction. That was a found piece. Um, this was a found piece. This is the I Ching I had laying around. This was part of a bigger set of things. Uh, this was on something, a little necklace or something that I found just randomly in the house. Um, I'm trying to think if any of these other ones were. But the dice, obviously, I like to use the dice because you can basically have, you know, almost like a three-card numerologically numeral, numerology reading with these. Now, I'd like to find a set of these, this size tiny dice in four colors for Geomancy because then it would cast a Geomancy figure as well, but I haven't quite found those yet. I need to, to be, get on the hunt for that because I would actually prefer that at this point. Uh, but I wasn't doing Geomancy, I think, when I made this set. But I do like having the numbers uh, to cast as well. Now, obviously, this is a lot of figures. I think it's over 60. I, I don't want to go through and count them all. So you say, okay, just like with, you know, a grand tableau only has 36, but they can't all be having something to say at the exact same time. And so I tend to read, um, I do that in two ways. So I'm, I'm going to show you first this where I'm doing a full, you know, full casting. Um, so I tend to, obviously you're going to have a question in mind, um, just like you do any other kind of reading. <clears throat> Shake it all up, cast it down, um, and I know that was probably really loud. And then uh, instead of like, okay, well, what are you supposed to do here, right? Okay, well, we've got a lot of things on the table, but every single one can't be saying every, everything. So I then look to significators. So like I would look and see here that is, the, if that was, if I was reading for a woman, then there I would look to that. Uh, here's a lot going on around a, a, a man card. Um, but if you know, here I could almost see this sort of uh, idea of the whip card being close to that idea of kind of maybe stuck in a pattern um, and that needs to be broken. Um, and so then I would look for other things, uh, such as if, they, if I want to look to what's going on with work. I would find the anchor card, and here we have the I Ching card. Um, and this is actually yin and yang. Uh, for me, the dragons are yang. I don't know. 
know if there's a specific way you're supposed to, but for me, the dragon side is yang and the yin is, and that was actually touching the work card. So then I would think, okay, you've got yang energy over the work card. It's time for you to take a really active role in what's going on at work. You can't just sit back and take the you know back seat to this. You're going to have to really push forward. If the question was heavily about you know work, then I might start to see, okay, well, this kind of follows and I might kind of follow along this path. You can, you can sometimes follow paths. Um, if they were getting ready to go to school or wanted to have a question about school, then I would look here. I would see, oh, well, the book is flipped over. So I would say, okay, there's some things that you don't quite know that you might need to learn about. Uh, we do have the magic wand over here, that, that little bit of magic, that little bit of ta-da energy. We do have the rider and the garden, right? So we have something that's going to come to them. Usually good news is going to be coming to them, uh, but it's coming from their connections and the networking that they They've done through the uh, garden card so they want to make sure that they're checking their sources checking their resources uh, tapping into people who might have be able to help them sort out because there may be some issues going on with school or training or that kind of thing um, so if I was looking at the book then I might look there um, I do generally like to look to this arrow card, and I'm not so much paying attention to where it is, but where it's pointing to, and see we have it pointing to decision card, this is the path card, and again it's flipped over, although this one it very often is flipped over, so I don't pay as much attention to it, but we have the path card here, there's a decision that needs to be made, that arrow is pointing straight at it, it's even kind of upright and pointing at it, it's like okay, pay attention, there's a decision, and the five uh, dice is next to it with a five there which is a disruptive number so there are some decisions that aren't clear and it's kind of things are really disruptive in that area and so we're going to have to pay close attention to what's going on what are the major decisions we might talk about that okay well, is there any major decision come oh it's coming up about work well you need to take real be, be active now it's not a time to take the back seat you know just depending on again the question um, and what we're looking at um, if I was looking at the heart card there's a lot going on around the heart card um, but we do have I'm sorry I say card all the time but it's figure or charm we have the owl actually with inside of it so there's some wisdom needed about the relationship around um, we do have friendship going on around it we do have um, needing to pay attention to our intuition here but because we, we do have the fish hook and the, um, this is sort of fa a faster journey. So I have this journey, which is the longer journey. Um, and then I have next to it the plane, which is a faster journey upside down. So, and we also have the hook there. So we can think, oh, you know, something's going on here um, that's kind of slowing down and grabbing on and, and slowing down this path that you're on. Um, but be careful that you're not being enticed by something that may actually not be good for you or good for the relationship, just depending on the question again, um, though, so forth and so on. So then I might look there. It's like, okay, well, um, you know, somebody's like, well, I'm kind of looking for a new job. A, I would look to the job. B, I would also look to maybe the child for something new coming up. And it's way over here at the edge. And there's not really anything around it. Um, and so I would kind of think about, hmm. Not, sh not so sure that the anything right, you know, quickly is coming up that's going to be new. We do have good luck kind of off to the to the far again, away from things. Um, so sometimes where, where it's at can be something. So if we have the spiral here for me, which is kind of transformative energy, um, kind of spiraling in and going inward and it's kind of off and it's not near anything, that may be something you need to tap into a little bit because we all need to find our center. And if it's way off in left field, literally um, that may be something that we need to pay attention to um, so I, very similar for me is that uh, it really helps me personally now somebody else might work with charms a completely different way uh, but it helps me to really approach it similar to Lenormand with the idea of um, significators because otherwise it can get quite a jumble and you're really like okay I don't what am I supposed to do with this jumble um, but in if you think about you know how 
the idea of Lenormand started with coffee grounds um, and the idea of or tea leaf readings that, those types of readings but it was from coffee ground readings you've got this you know vessel here and you've got all these things coming uh, coming into it now obviously every time you're not going to get the same things but you would have those little messages popping up um, and so the way to for me that this works like that is to have some sort of significators and work with significators and it just helps to really zoom in on what's important and sometimes you'll just find something will jump out at you same thing with a grand tableau if you're looking at a grand tableau and you're following all of your things and, and seeing where they are significators sometimes like a two or three card run will just really jump out at you and say that's important pay attention which is kind of what my little arrow does as well but sometimes just a little clump will say oh I, I need to look at this here we have the fox which is a warning um, pay attention kind of hey something might be going on pay attention it's time to think outside the box because it's, and it's with the, the scissors which is the idea of cutting something now the scissors for me is a little bit again more deliberate you needing to cut something from your life more more or less um, and so um, that's quite interesting to um, look at that combo so that combo might really stand out to me and say oh okay I need to pay attention to that so this is how one way that I, I, I really enjoy reading like this because you're just kind of casting it on the table and then you're starting to look at your clients. Again, you're treating very similar to how I would treat a grand tableau. Um, and it just, it reads beautifully. I love to do charm castings. Uh, and I just, this this is probably my favorite way is this, this full on shake it up, cast it on the table and start to pick apart what, what this has to say for that that person for that question in this this moment right um, so this is probably my favorite way to use charm casting but the other way that I do use it I'm gonna, I don't need this so much for it is say I'm doing a reading for somebody now I particularly like this in nine card readings and you can do this with Lenormand or Tarot or anything else of that matter um, so let's just say that I'm doing this a nine card reading So what I generally would do is I would go ahead and read this card, this reading the way that I was going to, you know, do the reading. Uh, go ahead and do the actual tarot reading or the Lenormand reading and do what I'm going to do. And then I would give this, whoops, <laughs> I would give this a little bit of a shake up. And then I would literally just grab and toss don't pay a whole lot of attention. Don't give yourself time to feel around. What is that? Sorry about that. I thought um, my doorbell went off and I'm like, my, door my doorbell doesn't even work. Um, <laughs> so you can see here that we obviously, um, you know, again, I try very, very deliberately. <laughs> I deliberately try not to be deliberate. Um, I really do. I think for me personally, I just want to um, really keep it uh, a smooth, you know, kind of shake, shake. That's why I keep the lid off of it. So I'm just kind of shake, 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 grab and toss. And I just try not to think. I don't try not to grab specifically or get in there and like dig around. Just kind of grab and throw um, and see where things land. Um, and so generally, to be honest, when you're doing it this way, things are going to land in the middle, which is okay because that's how I read anyway. So this middle card is really important as well as the when I'm doing a nine card. And I generally am doing this with a nine card. I do sometimes do it with a three card as well, which I'll show you in a second. But you know, these two cards are really important. So for those main ones to land in the middle, it, it works with my reading style anyway. But I am going to pay attention to this because we have the Queen of, of, of Pentacles here, 
but but we have the airplane which is fast movement reverse which might be a good thing it might be like it's not a time for fast movement it's not a time for you know galloping all over the place this is the time to slow down and really tap into your roots with the queen of pentacles now this i do pay attention even though it's not on the cards because i don't grab a lot so everything on the table i am reading and so with this over here then i'm going to a little bit more look at the acorn energy that planted the seed right this is the time to this is the potential here you've got the potential of a giant oak tree here but first this has to actually be planted and it has to have all the right conditions but that idea of really um, recognizing your potential and planting the seeds that you want to eventually grow is that's going to be that immediate future that you need to pay attention to which is interesting after the tower card right because you have the idea of things have crumbled well now it's time to plant new things um, so then I would look to those things there um so I, that's one of the ways that I use uh, use it, and again, I really do like it in a, in a nine card because it does give you, you know, quite a. Uh, uh, um, turn my phone off. Um, it gives you a little bit of a table, so to speak, or an area to cast on. So that's why I quite like that. But I will say that I do the same thing sometimes with the three card, though primarily I do it with a nine card. Um, so I might, you know, again, cast three cards. This one, though, I just feel like I'm just more looking at the charms than really looking so much at the placement because, again, you've got a very small thing. If you throw it down on it, it's, you're always going to probably be hitting the middle, and it's going to, you know, I, I don't pay as much with a three card. I mostly just pick, 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 pick. I've, I've read my three card. I always read my reading first. Uh, read my three cards, blah, 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 and then ca you know cast down. And in general, I'm not so much in a three card. I'm not as much paying attention to where is it by. I'm more looking at the configuration of where things are in relation to each other. Are they flipped over? You know, the plant, the seed has been planted in the past, so a little bit that it's there. Uh, but for the most part, I'm just thinking, okay, what are these these according to the question at hand how do these charms relate so I truthfully probably wouldn't even have to cast them so vigorously although I do because you know whether they're going to be upside down or right side up how are they clumped like I would pay attention to these three together because they are clumped together um, we do have an, a kind of upward motion sweep and I might think about the idea of fish and the acorn and leading to um the flower card that like I might kind of pay attention to that that movement of the charms but I'm not as much paying attention to how they land in relation to the cards does that make sense it's just because it's just a smaller and I literally would have to plunk it right down here and it's just going to give me less information than the nine card casting it and using the what's on what card so those are the three ways that I tend to use uh, um, charm casting. Now, I, the other way that I have done it, but I haven't done it a lot yet, is with Geomancy Shield Chart. Same sort of thing. I would actually do the shield, and I gen generally do it on the one-page shield, and then cast and see what might land in the houses. Um, but I'm not going to go into that here because I haven't used it a lot uh, enough to say how I feel about how that works. Whereas this I've used, these I've used quite consistently for different clients. I need to, to put them up as a separate option because some people want those. Um, but it's, it's great for great get, gaining clarity. That's another thing. So let's say I've done, you know, a three card reading and I've done, and I, I've kind of done the reading. I think, okay, I've got a handle on it, but there's still a little bit of question. Say, okay, I see what's going on, but what, what do I really need to be focusing on? Like, what's my next step or my next action? You know, then I might grab a few and see, okay, well, what is that kind of clarifying to me about what whatever question that I have, you know, I can use it sort of as a clarifying, but a lot of times I just use it just in conjunction with, just for more information. Um, so there we go. Um, I just wanted to do this quick video to, uh, because again, I've had a lot of questions uh, about how I use term casting now that I've used it for a while. How do I feel about it? Um, for me, it's again, very similar vibes to Lenormand. It feels like it's that 
same quick, uh, quick kind of way of gaining information uh, that feels very similar. In the way that I read it, it feels very similar to Lenormand. Uh, very concise, to the point. Um, you don't sit there and really dig into, oh my goodness, well this fish and this is going on and it's got scales and this cur tail is curved. And you know, I'm not going into digging into details. I'm just like, hey, what does that quickly say to me? When I see that cluster of them together, what is that saying to me in a, in a kind of quick Lenormandy fashion? Um, so that's just how I approach it. I hope this has been interesting to you. Um, again, it, it just, it just takes time. You know, if you want to collect your own set, start by looking around your house and seeing little, you know, broken off uh, necklace pieces that you didn't use, an old tarnished ring, you know, a, a random little rock that you might have, a charm thing from your grandmother, a little, again, a broken, uh, it was on a, on a string of beads or something like that that was broken. It was just sitting in a little, you know, we all have those little bowls that are full of random things. Uh, a key, this is an actual, you know, little key to something. Um, you know, so you, that's the first place to start is, okay, what do you have laying around um, that you can pull into your casting set? And then the other thing is to look at like craft stores, Hobby Lobby, again, in the U.S., Hobby Lobby, uh, Michaels, Joanne Fabrics, they all have in the jewelry section little charms uh, that, uh, like for example, the scissors, this was a, a necklace I think that I had at one point. I don't know about the airplane. This came in a little set. It's great when you can find, and again, I always use coupons, so you don't spend, so like for example, I just bought these um, thing. I got four of them and I ended up paying like $1.74. Um, so obviously I don't need four of them, but I can give them to friends of mine that I know use charm casting and kind of pass those on. Uh, the ones that I don't use. Same thing, I have uh, the lantern here for shedding light on things um, that Annika had gotten a set, you know, a set of them. And so she sent me the lantern uh, because she had, you know, more than one of them. Um, sometimes, again, you'll get sets like this. Um, where is the this this and this I think I think it was these three all came together um, and I probably paid two dollars for this little set uh, and yet I got three charms out of it so it doesn't have to be expensive this was again from a something that was broken that's you can even see that's a broken necklace thing that I had laying around um, and so you know these I these I bought Specifically, I think I bought a little container of those, but sometimes you have games. Like I had, at one time I couldn't find it, but I had little dice in an I Ching, my, not I Ching, um, my Mahjong tile set, but I couldn't find those because there's even littler and even cuter, but I can't find those. I know I have them somewhere. Um, but yeah, so it's, you know, look for what you can find and then just start, start looking for it. And a lot of times in the clearance section of crafts, they'll have like a little package of these on clearance for a dollar and you you may only use one of them but they're cheap right so that's that's kind of how I gathered now you can um, get sets of these people do sell sets of these um, because a lot of times they'll be setting their own up and you can only get packages of sometimes six or ten or something and you'll have ten of each thing so then they'll sell sets um, you can also get like a mixed bags of charms on Etsy and things like that to just have a, a big bag of random charms that you can go through and kind of pull out what works for you for cheaper um, so there are you know there's just different ways to go about gaining um, a charm set but it really I, I kept track at one time um, how much I spent on this. I don't know if it's on one of my old videos. I want to say that I probably, because I do have more than this as well. These are just the ones that I really use. Um, and I want to say that I spent maybe between $20 and $30. I don't think $30, but I, I, it's been a while. But I think that maybe all together I probably 
I know I spent at least $20, but I would say between $20. So, yeah, I, I remember thinking, well, it's no different than a deck of cards. And this is like, a, this is a 60 some, maybe up to 70, 60 some deck of cards because each one represents a card and a meaning just like a card would be. So I'm like, okay, well, that's not bad. Um, it's something that I'll have forever and it only just gets more and more wonderful. You know, this is all banged up and it starts to get tarnished and it only just gets more, more yours. So there you go. I hope that this has been helpful in some way. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful day.